Hey y'all. I am excited to talk today about leadership and I'm going to dive right in because there's a lot of information here. So, um, I think that there's a question we can ask ourselves as leaders. As a leader, do you lean towards fear or rest? As a leader, am I leaning into fear or am I leaning more in a restful position? And I'm going to break that down by looking at Saul versus David and yeah. I want to preface this by saying I know the Old Testament can be intimidating and I also know that we can feel like Christianese happens in church. So um, I grew up in the church and I still felt lost all the time, but I felt like I couldn't ask questions because I was like, oh, everybody knows what they're talking about. They would refer to an old Bible study or a character or a book in the Bible and I wouldn't know, but it sounded like everybody else knew. So I just kind of hung in there or whatever or, and I never asked and then, yeah. and. I'm going to rush through and talk like that today. As in, I'm gonna talk as if you already know. And I'm gonna put references at the bottom of this video so that way you can look it up on your own. Please don't think that you can't ask questions and please don't think that that I know it all or that you're missing something or that everybody knows that but you. Like literally, I grew up in the church and I didn't know. I only know stories and refer to them quickly because I've started to read the Bible on my own a couple of years ago and I literally just, I just read it on my own and um, I don't want this to turn you off to thinking that you can't understand or that it's over your head or that Christianity is like just a club of people talking about stuff and like not realizing that not everybody's following along. I do see you, I do hear you, I do recognize that I'm going to be racing through this today um, and it's just for the sake of saying what I feel like I'm supposed to share and don't let it turn you off to the Old Testament. Don't let it turn you off to thinking that everybody knows but you because there is a lot that I don't know. Um, what I'm going to be talking about today is mostly from 1 Samuel. So there you know, there you know, there you go. I, I know for me, I would have, I used to think that there was like a book of David in the Old Testament because David's talked about so much in church. Turns out there's not, uh, but a lot of this is in 1 Samuel. Um, so quick reference point, um, with that in mind, Saul is kind of this example of a bad king. It didn't start out that way, but it ended that way. And David is described, he's also a king. He's the king that came after Saul. And he's described on the other hand as a man after God's own heart. Um, not in a fairy tale way. Like we can look at the Bible sometimes and pretend like people weren't people. Like Saul was a real guy that walked on the earth. David was a real guy that walked on the earth. And David was sinful and David had his own issues. A lot of them are even in the Bible. Um, so David wasn't perfect. And I think that that can even give us encouragement. As we ask how we are acting as leaders, um, we can know that David wasn't perfect. It was more of like in the wrestling match between him and God, um, who kind of got to take the lead and the control that day, if that makes sense. So... Anyways, prefaces over, let's dive in. So as a leader, do you lean towards fear or do you lean towards rest? I would make the argument that Saul was driven by fear. Um, and fear manifests itself a lot of different ways. Like uh, there's freeze, there's flight, there's fight. And um, for Saul specifically, fear for him looked a lot like controlling and getting more and more and more tight-fisted and I think that happens to us a lot as leaders I think I freeze a lot um it's not always being in control but I think that I do have a tendency to control uh, I think that a lot of us as leaders can control so an example of that is um like and this is before like Saul went crazy started throwing spears at people and chasing David down to try to kill him but I'm not talking about like way back then. I'm talking about before David was even anointed to be God's chosen one. Anointed is a big word. Sorry. Same thing. Like you don't have to know what anointed means to follow along right now. Um, so Saul is um, fighting the Philistine army and he has this group of people around him. And in the Old Testament to kind of give a battle over to God or like to recognize God was there. Um, they were supposed to have like a sacrifice to start the battle off or whatever. I don't completely understand it, but I understand enough to tell you that, that it was basically recognizing God because the battle is God's, it's not ours. And, um, Saul had people around him and his men were literally, it says, this is in first Samuel 13, trembling with fear. 
Um, Saul waited there seven days for Samuel, as Samuel had instructed him earlier, but Samuel still didn't come. Saul realized that his troops were rapidly slipping away, so he demanded for the stuff for the sacrifices to be brought to him and the offerings to be brought to him. Um, so Saul did the sacrifice, and then Samuel shows up on the scene who was supposed to do the sacrifice, and Samuel's like, wait, why did you do the sacrifice yourself? And Saul's like, <laughs> he said, uh, uh, the Philistines were ready to march against us, and I felt compelled to offer the burnt offering myself before you came. And, like, we reason it out, like, we're like, yeah, um, God, I'm pretty sure would want me to do this. And God's like, no, I had a man of God coming who told you to wait. That's the last thing I told you. So why didn't you just wait? And like what, like Saul was like reasoning through it. Like I, I know the God thing was to act. So I acted and the God thing was actually to wait on what God had already said he was going to do. And it came down to fear and that tight grip that happens where when things are starting to get out of hand, the people start trembling. You feel like you're losing control. You feel like you don't know what's going to happen. And like the more time goes on, the more antsy you're getting. We start to pull things and we start to take them into our own hands. And that's what Saul did. And throughout his whole life, you just see a pattern of Saul giving into fear. He had fear of people. He was listening to people instead of God. He wasn't fully obedient because he was listening to what people were doing. And, um... He's not willing to wait. That's a really big theme for Saul is that he's not willing to wait. And um, so as a leader, he was leaning towards fear. That's the point that I have for Saul. In contrast, David was leaning in rest. Now, rest did not mean days off. Saul been working since he was a boy, okay? He was a shepherd. He's delivering food to his brothers when they're in the army. When he goes to deliver food, he sees somebody. He, he, he took down Goliath. We won't go into that story. He gets called to the palace, and he starts um, playing the harp for Saul because Saul had bad spirits in him, and David playing music helped. Um, and then Saul starts throwing spears at David while he plays music, and, say, and David has to dodge them and run away. Um, David starts leading armies and he starts beating, beating the Philistines and leading armies. And then eventually he has to go on the run because Saul wants to kill him. And, um, with all of that, like David, there's a song that I want to insert here <laughs> where like, it's, I believe it's like, I can't take no days off, but I won't, but I referred to it. So when, when we, we kind of got a taste of it. Um, so David rested while he was on the run. That's key. When I say fear versus rest, the leader isn't just sitting around chilling, eating grapes. Okay. Like that's not what I mean when I say fear versus rest. The fear is still present in both situations, but what are you doing with the fear? Are you getting more tight fisted or freezing or whatever you're doing? Or are you processing through it to eventually getting to a place where you can be restful, even in the reality of the fear that's in your face? Um, David had ample chance to listen to people around him that were very loud Saul had ample chance to listen to people around him that were very loud. Saul gave into it. David would sometimes even start to give in and be like, I don't know, the reasoning of the people sounds pretty realistic right now. And then he'd back up and be like, wait, 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 that's not what God said. And I'm putting this back in God's hands. And ultimately, fear is putting the day-to-day -day back into God's hands or grabbing onto it and clinging onto it with your own hands. And as a leader, we can act like Saul, where we can't wait, where we're listening to people, where the crowds and the people that are following us, who we are supposed to be the ones waking up, waking up every day to influence them. If we wake up and they're influencing us, not that we're good leaders that listen to the people around us, but like if they're influencing us, like that's not good leadership. And David had people around him that were influencing him. And they were like, you should take revenge. God is saying this to you. Da, da, da. And David was like, that's not what God said. That's not the way that God plays it out. That's not what God told. Like, that's not what God said last. And um, in the day to day, David would put it over and over and over again and give it back to God. He had lots of opportunities to kill Saul or take revenge on him. And he would sit there and instead he'd be like, I don't know how Saul's going to die. It might be of old age. It might be in war. It might be some other way. But God is going to take care of that, and I'm leaving that in God's hands. And, and like over and over again, you see Saul, David saying, and I'm putting it in God's hands. And what's beautiful is that we have the Psalms too. 
Rest was an emotional roller coaster for David. He wasn't just chill and zen all the time. He was angry, he was sad, he was happy, he was all over the place. And then what's cool is we have the gift of Psalms to see the emotional roller coaster that David went on with God, but in front of people, he was acting out of rest and he was putting it back in God's hands. Whereas Saul, he had an emotional roller coaster as well. But the emotional roller coaster played out in front of people. He started chasing people. He's throwing spears at people. Um, he's angry. Um, and he was always throwing God in the mix like it was God's will, whatever he was doing. There are multiple times in scripture, and y'all, this is so important. Like even in 1 Samuel 13 that I quoted, um, I haven't even asked the Lord's, for the Lord's help, so I felt compelled to offer the burnt offering myself. You could say that that's Christianese and being like, yeah, so, so I mean, I know the God thing would be to make sure this offering happens before we go into battle, right? No, it, not if it's your way instead of God's way of doing it. Like God, a huge thing that God asks from us is for us to wait. Um, it's just a theme all over the place. And if you look at Saul versus David, there were multiple times um, that David came, that God came in the last second for David. Um, when Saul was hunting David down to kill him, he was on the other side of this mountain, super close to David. And then last second gets called away to go somewhere else. And the thing is, we don't see David taking his into his own hand. Like all we see is like, oh my goodness, that was a close call. Looks like God was looking out for David. And I believe that God set up multiple opportunities for that same story to play out with Saul and Saul took action before God could show up. In that time where Saul went and he did the sacrifice before Samuel showed up, I think that God was giving him up an opportunity to have that gap of time where God had to show up. And instead of God showing up and instead of it being in God's hands, Saul grabbed it from God's hands and took it himself. And he would, like, you can even justify that as a leader, especially a leader in ministry or that's doing it for God or whatever, where you're like, well, this is what God would want me to do. This is me being a responsible leader and being a good steward of my leadership. And God instead is like, you're not resting in me. Um, and I think we talk about the fear of God a lot. And it's this far out thing where it's like, what does fear of God even mean? And I think that there, like Saul had fear. And I think that what David had was a fear of God, where ultimately like, there were lots of options of what to do with fear. You could freeze, you could fly, you could, you could fly, just start jump in the air and get some wings. Um, but you could grab onto it again with your own hands, which I think as leaders, I think we're super prone to that where we want to grab onto it again into our own hands and even stamp God on it and say that it's God's will for us to do that. Um, and David instead over and over again would either restrain himself and be like, I know that this is in God's hands, or he would go out when it was scary and be like, I can go out because it's in God's hands and I'm blessed by God. Um, and I think that that's what fear of God is. I think that fear of God is what we're doing with fear. Is fear making us get tighter with our hands or is the fear that we're experiencing every day, is it something that we're able to put back into his hands and be like, the fear is real, but so is God in this situation. So as a leader, are you leaning towards fear or are you leaning towards rest? Which rest is really just what we're acting out of after we've given the fear back to God. We're able to rest and be like, I know that God's got this. Um, this is why leadership development with a biblical worldview matters. Um, what I do is I lead a program called Compassion Core, which is a leadership development program for young students. And um, we super, super, super believe in these students. And we believe that um, the most important thing that we can do for them is help them develop this biblical worldview. Um, and you can learn leadership from anywhere in the world, it feels like, but um, there's only one place that you can develop a biblical worldview. And um, yeah, so as I'm wrestling what it looks like for me to lead, for what it looks like for students to be leaders, um, leadership just sticks out in the Bible all over the place. And this is how it stuck out this month. So I wanted to share with y'all. Um, I will put descriptions, or in the description, I'll put different references to different parts of the Bible I talked about today, because y'all... There's just, I, I've been sitting and reading about David and Saul and leadership for the past, I don't know, probably at least three weeks or a month or something. So there's so many ways that you can dive into this. And I'm not special in that I can talk to this about, to you about this. Like it literally just took me opening up my Bible. 
Um, so I'm going to put those references for you. I super encourage you to dive in on your own. But as you look at the story of Saul, as you look at the story of David, as you look at the way that you're interacting with your life today, what are you doing with fear? Ultimately, fear um, in the day-to-day, -day, are we putting it back in God's hands or are we grabbing onto it with our own hands and insisting that we hold onto it ourselves? Um, yeah. Thanks for listening. <laughs>